nap time. Da, 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 da. Okay, I need a new theme song. You guys, I have so much to share. <laughs> You know, when you're working on it throughout the week, you think you're not doing that much. But when you start to 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 bring it all together to share it in one video, it's like, oh my gosh, I would, I got a lot done. And that's on top of you know normal real life stuff like housework and that kind of stuff. But um, I have to get this stuff shared so I can get it put away. It just kind of I try to pile it over on a table. I've got. So I don't forget what I'm going to share and it the pile it overfloweth today. Um, I think I'm just, I have it all spread out on my table here. And so I think I'm just going to jump in. It's not going to be any rhyme or reason. Um, I have some haul goodies I'll show at the end. Projects to share. Things I did, working on, things coming, things I finished. Stuff like that. A whole bunch of stuff. Um... I'm really having a good time doing these videos. They are a lot of fun and it's a lot of fun to see what I've been up to put into a video in, in the sense of for myself, of a sense of accomplishment. And um, I feel also because I really want to do these weekly recap videos that it motivates me to get things worked on and how, you know, get them done and, or, or at least something progressive done on them so that I have something to share at the end of the week. And that's really helped me get some projects done and to keep motivated to finish things and dig through things. Um, one of the big, th I'm going to just, I'll start out with, with the big thing is I built a floor frame for my, uh, cross stitch. Well, my husband, built it. I, I directed traffic and he drove the car, if you will. Um, I w have been looking, I bought, I showed in, I think the last vid, one of the last two videos, um, a couple of frames that I have and one of them, it, it's okay. It needed work to be fixed. But what I really wanted was one I could set either at my desk or at my couch that sat on the floor because there's no table in front of my couch. I didn't want one that sat in my lap on the couch and I didn't want one that sat on my desk because they take up a lot of room. And so we, we built a floor frame and I'm not gonna show it in this video. First of all, it's big and I'm not prepared. Second of all, it's not really done. We're still kind of tweaking it, but it was pretty cool. There, the, the ones that we were looking at on Amazon were $100, $150. And I thought, oh my God, I, I can't spend that as a new person. So we got some bolts and a couple pieces of wood and, and built it for a fraction of that. So I'm kind of excited about it. But I'll share that in the next video. Or, well, whenever. Um, it go What I built it for, to fit were frames like this. Ooh, I just barely fit, you guys. Um they bolt from the side and then you can twist them and oh hold on I forgot my my package not package, but the stuff that goes with this. Anyway, so, so I built the floor frame to go with with this setup. Um, I don't know what else I'll use on it. My embroidery projects, I like setting on the embroidery um, hoop frame that you'll see in a minute. Uh, you saw it in the last video, though. And I, I like that one for embroidery, but I like this one for cross-stitch. And I, I think last week I was just trying to figure out this pattern of moving it from the, this was a print pre-printed pattern and it looked like, it looks like this. And um, I don't wanna, do, didn't wanna do it on the white and I didn't wanna use the pre-printed because now I've kind of figured out how to do the counted and I like that better. Um, the colors that they printed on this were a little confusing for me anyways, so it was just better to just not. 
Um, so I've been following the chart that's in it to do it on this. This is 14 count Ada. I just got it at Walmart. It's a DMC Carolina linen. I don't know. It's whatever Walmart had. Um, and so I, I've got all this done this week and really this is just a couple of days worth of work because I haven't been able to work on it most of the week and because we've been working on the frame and other things, but I really think it looks much better on this natural color. And I started in the middle hope and it's way smaller than my brain thought it was going to be. I have a lot to learn about size and stitches and stuff, which is fine. I don't mind the size being smaller. I just now I wish I hadn't started it in the middle of this fabric. There's going to be a little bit extra. Um, but this is, this is what it's going to look like. And I'm, I'm working my way across. I also tried to do it like one row at a time with one color. That was not fun. And so I finally just dug out a whole bunch of needles and all the thread colors that were in the tablecloth that go across here. And um, I've just been stitching them as I go and so much easier. I, I've never seen, I'm sure people do that. I don't, I'm not inventing the wheel here. I just, on the cross stitch floss tube things, I've never seen anybody really show, they, they, they have, they're, they're very fancy and they like take everything out of their frames and iron it and do all that. And I'll be honest, that's never going to happen here. Cause no. Um, so they never really show how they're stitching. I guess they just assume everybody knows and therefore everybody's just like, Oh, that's old news. And I think a lot of the, the cross stitchers that, that, post YouTube videos now, forget that they are inspiring new stitchers and they, what they shortcut a lot of the time, the rest of us are sitting here going, huh? I don't know what that means. It's like I had to look up one over two and two over two and one over one the other night because I just, I, everybody's talking about this one over one and two over two. And I'm like, eh? And so Anyways, not that I want anybody to change anybody's style. I'm just I was saying that some of my favorite floss tubers are, unfortunately, they, they like, I've been doing this for 40 years, you know, and so they forget that the rest of us haven't. Not, not the rest of us, but, you know, there are people that are new and that kind of stuff. So during those tidbits of this is what my thread looks like as I'm going and, and it, I don't, I guess it's taboo to like have a needle stuck in the, in the material when you're showing things. And I don't know, there's apparently a lot of rules and holy crap, I probably have broke all of them. But anyways, I'm not taking, I'm it's not. It's 1145. Let me move, mute that. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm just not fancy and <laughs> welcome to my chaos channel. Yeah. So anyways, this is what I've, I'm doing. And you can see that I have all the threads going and I guess maybe I'm just not good enough to know where to start it again if I take all the threads off just to show what I'm doing. Um, but yeah, uh, th so this is what I'm working on. And I really, I'm just, it's so tiny. <laughs> and it's so pretty and delicate. And I'm just, I can't believe I can do it. <laughs> Um, anyway, so that, that's this project and it goes back on my big floor frame, uh, when I'm done here. But yeah, so I, I just love seeing what these, these advanced cross stitchers are doing because it gives me hope of where someday I can be. Uh, but on the flip side, there, there's a lot of it that I'm like, wait, did, what? What thread is that? They're like, you know, I just got some thread out of, you know, this weak, whatever, d dying stuff. And, 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 you know, it's the, and I'm like, no, 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 actually I don't. And that's very pretty. What, what is that? <laughs> you know, I want it kind of thing. And, um, yes. So, but I just take notes and I Google a lot. <laughs> All right, so I guess we're going to kind of show projects I've been working on. These are mostly the stitches, then I'll move into the paper craft. But it, honestly, I'm just going to hang on. Hang on for the ride. Haul will be at the end, sort of. 
I don't know. We'll see. It's, it's like I said, it's all spread out. Okay, the next project I did get done is I'm working on this four quadrant. It's not the way the pattern's written. I'm just doing it that way. Um, happiness is crossstitching.blogspot.co.uk uh, is the one I've been getting these little patterns off of. And they just help me learn to count space, if you will. And so um, this was the first one I did, and you saw that in the last video. It took me a couple of days to complete this because I it was my very, very first counted cross stitch. And for some reason, my brain could not translate a grid to the fabric. And so I struggled through the whole thing. And then I started doing the kitchen one when I switched it from one fabric to the next and it like a light bulb went off. So I did this one in like an hour and a half. <laughs> Boom, figured it out. Um, so that this this one, I don't have, it's in my book. It's in my book. Hold on, I got my book. Um, this one is this pattern right here. And again, these are free patterns. I will link them. And I changed out a little bit of the colors and stuff. I'm trying to use all the same colors on them. And then I have two more that I want to do here. And I'm going to, I bought some three inch hoops. I'm going to stain and put these in to hang on the wall. I hope I left enough fabric. We're going to find out. <laughs> We're going to find out. Um, but yeah, so this is, this is the last one that I completed. And then the next one I'm doing is going to go down here and it's this, she said to right click, save and print. And it does not, this is what size it prints out at. So, um, I blew it up and I, I'm going to try to figure it out from there. Um, but I want this one to go into this. I like the basket with the butterfly and stuff. So that's going to go here. Um, and then I have a bouquet that's going to go there and then I will get that finished and those will be my first, first cross stitch. Well, this was my first, but you know what I mean? Anyways, it's just kind of fun, um, to play. I don't know the threads or anything because they're just Amazon, you know, cheap China stuff that I got and I'm just playing to learn. So that's, that's that project that I'm working on. All right. Next cross stitch that I am working on is this garden one. It is country stitching, uh, garden number 367. I got it on Etsy. The seller that I got it from does not carry it anymore, so I'm not sure where you can get it. Um, and this one's a little hard to show without the, the grading, but I'm not gonna worry about it because if you manage to screenshot and make a pattern out of this you go you just you rock um, but anyways last time I had just the house part done and um, I've been working this week to get the vine arbor done and the the house color was switched out to from the blue to the brown because I'm trying to match my house I used a darker brown for the roof because that's what my house looks like um, I'm going to turn these, they, she used, whoever did the pattern, did all of them in these pinks. Really, this looks like red, but the fabric, the thread that came in it was fuchsia. So I don't know what happened there, but, um, I'm going to do, um, the flowers in pink and I'm going to do the heart and the door in red. Um, but these two flowers that are on the side here, I'm going to turn them into sunflowers. And so I'm going to do them with a darker green and a yellow. And, and I think that'll be a nice pop of color in there. I also think I might do different cut bounce back and forth with the colors. I imagine I'm breaking every cross stitch rule there is out there about how, you know, that's not what the pattern was meant to do and that kind of stuff. But I'm getting into this to tell my own story. And so right or wrong, this is how I'm stitching it. <laughs> So, um, anyways, and then, you know, so there's like hearts, I'm going to do them in the red and, and I think I'm going to do the inside of the windows in a light blue. So we'll see how that goes, but that's what I've been working on, uh, so far on this project. I got the house all done. I'm, I haven't figured out what to do with the chimneys yet. And I got the fence 
and then I got this far on the arbor. And the cool thing about this is that we built last year a huge arbor and uh, a tunnel to grow vegetables under. We have a huge arbor that goes around and over our, our big garden. And then inside it, we grew, did a tunnel that you can walk through that um, we grew squash this year. We're going to grow melons on it. And so it reminded me of that. And so I thought that was kind of cool. Um, I'm really enjoying this. Um, but what I'm not enjoying is now that I know how to do counted, this linen is terrible. It is really, really hard to get straight stitching out of it at all because it's all over the place. I guess it's not, it is not what they call even weave. It is linen because it has got bits and bobs and that kind of stuff in it. It's really hard to stitch on to get it straight. Um, and the crosses are huge in this. And so now I wish that it was smaller. So I may, when I, I'm going to complete this, but I may redo this on an Ada, um, like an 11 count, not an 11, probably a 16 or an 18 eight count Ada. Um, so it's a lot smaller and see how it turns out on that too. I think that'd be fun. But anyways, that is how far I have gotten on that project. I think that's all the cross stitching that I have going. I'm, I'm trying not to get a whole bunch of cross stitching going because I, I want to be a finisher. I don't want to, I, I don't want to be monogamous in the sense that I only stitch on one project till it's done, but I also don't want to have so many out that I never get anything finished. My goal this year is to get something hanging on the wall. And so for me, I'm going to do a couple of projects at a time till they're finished. And then I'll just keep adding from there. Uh, because I also have embroidery projects going. Um, let's see. First one I have is my, um, journal cover that I'm making and I'll try to get this turned in here. Uh, the last time I showed all I had was the letters done. I don't think I even had these done, the green or anything done on the last video, but I got the letters completed and then that took me almost a week. I have since gotten faster. <laughs> and so this, this whole thing here took me an evening and a morning to do and so I've gotten a lot faster which is fun and nice I made most of this up I'm sure that again the embroidery professionals the needle workers are going ah, girl that's so bad but you know what I am just I figure I just have to stitch stitch and stitch and stitch and as the more I stitch the better I will get and the more accurate I will get and yada yada but um I'm not going to worry about it and and I'm okay with it not being perfect and and true and all of that stuff because it's a journal cover. It's going to go get beat up. Um but it's it's for my cross stitch book or my stitching book and I'll show that in a minute. But yeah, so this is as far as I've gotten on this. Um I need to do this pattern. I have to take it out of the hoop and draw it at the bottom, but basically this is going to flip and come down to the to the bottom part here. This is that frame I showed last Last time, I uh, just added some hooks on there to hold my scissors and my needle threader. Um, and I love this frame. This frame is the bomb to ageme.com. Um, I love, 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 love this frame. I'd like to get another one, but I have to save up now. My budget's like screaming. Um, and so, but I'd like to get another one because I really, really like this. And I'm also going to build a taller peg so that I can do a bigger hoop. But I think it'll do up to the biggest hoop you can get. But what I want to do is hook, figure out how to hook this type of setup to that square frame you just saw my cross stitch on. Anyway, so uh, that's that's how far I've gotten on that embroidery project. I don't know where this one's going. This is like a never ending one until it's done. And it may go on and off and on and off of my journal until I am satisfied that it's complete. It's just a tinker project. And so that's, that's that embroidery project. And then I have, I am starting 
another one. Hold on, I gotta, everything is kind of teetering. Um, and maybe you guys want to join in on it with me. And so uh, I was searching YouTube as you do, and I ran across um, a stitch uh, wheel sampler video that a lady is putting together. She's got a whole playlist of stitches of videos and stuff. Um, I have been searching for an embroidery sampler, stitch sampler book in the sense that something that will tell me exactly what to do and where to put it. Does that make sense? I've been trying to explain this on Instagram and it's not coming out right. I really don't care what the woman teaches us to put in it. I just want to be told, here's your framework and what needs to go in the box. And then I'm okay with figuring out the rest of it from there. There's a French one that I would love to have, but it's like $80 80 something, whatever the French Euro, whatever. I don't know what the French currency is. I think it's French, um, but it's like 80 whatever, which is a lot of money. And it's, it's, I don't mind making it myself. I just want the pattern. If it had a PDF, I'd pay 50 bucks for it. Cause I, it's beautiful and I want it, but, um, but there's no PDF for it. So I've been trying to find a sampler book for embroidery and most of them, I'll be honest, they look like little kids did them. I'm not into randomness of putting it wherever, you know, hey, I'll put a box stitch here and I'll put a pistol stitch over here. I'm looking for structure and I would love, that the cross stitchers have beautiful needle books, needle stitch books, but there's nothing for embroidery that doesn't look kitty, I guess, and that's set up and you follow a pattern and that kind of stuff. And so if somebody knows of something like that, oh, please, 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 please tell me <laughs> where you have found it. And I will leave the information below of what I'm looking for um, in, in about the French one so you can kind of get a journal idea. But um, so I found this one and again, I've had several people say, well, there's better teachers or whatever. And I, I don't know and I don't care. I'm not really interested in worrying about her, what her st teaching style is. What I want is something that tells me what to put where and I, when I'm done, I have a completed piece. But it's all of just individual stitches to learn how to do them. And so I ran across this stitch sampler wheel um, and She's still doing the stitches. I think she's on the outer one finishing up, but I wanna start this on March 1st. If you'd like to join in, I'm gonna leave all the information down below. It's not official stitch along. It's not any of that kind of stuff. I just thought it would be fun to do it together, especially if you guys are new or getting back into it. Um, I am going to just use a piece of this painter's cloth that I have. Um, I just, I think it's pretty and it was free. <laughs> well, it wasn't really free. It was really, really cheap. Um, and so I, I, um, I'm going to use that as my cloth and I am going to do it with a 10 inch hoop. This is the pattern that I, I resized in word and I printed out that I need to draw on my material. Um, so I can get started on March 1st. And what I'm going to use is just, I have these random, variegated flosses and I'm just, I don't have a project for them and I don't, I'm just going to use them up and I have some other ones. This is just what I grabbed. And so I want to, um, use those in the stitches and, and see, I thought that'd be fun. Um, but yeah, I'll leave all the information down below. If you want to join in, let me know just so that we can kind of, you know, I, I'm not gonna make up a hashtag or anything for it. There's already one called hashtag stitch wheel. We'll just use that one. And I would love to see what you're doing. I'm gonna start this on March 1st. I will have, if you're not following me on Facebook or Instagram, that's where I'm gonna post most of this throughout the week as I get started. And then of course I'll add what I've gotten done in the next recap video. But um, 
So I would love to see what you're doing. Hit me up on one of, you know, Instagram or Facebook if you're doing it too so that we can kind of cheer each other on. I can't wait to see what you guys do. I know there's several on Facebook and Instagram already that have said, hey, yeah, I want to do it too. And so I just thought it would be fun. Um, I had several people that jumped in and say, oh, this lady's a better teacher, yada, yada, than this one. And and I'm, you know, that kind of stuff. And you can use any videos you want. That's not the point of this. To me, the point of it is, is that she said to put French knots in the middle. You can do whatever you want and follow whoever's tutorials you want. Just put French knots in the middle. That's basically my plan for it. So I, I don't know how that kind of, I, I, it's, it always saddens me when people are not, when people do things like that. But anyways, um, this is what I'm going to do. If you'd like to join along, put hashtag stitch wheel in your video and we will see where this goes. Hit me up on Instagram and Facebook and um, I will try to do a video separate about this, but don't, don't quote me. I don't know if that'll happen or not. I don't know if anybody wants a separate video on this. So maybe leave that in the comments down below. But I just thought it would be a fun project. We could do a stitch or two a day or a week or whatever. I'm going to try to do at least one stitch a day. There's 50, I believe, uh, blanks in here. So that's, you know, just under two months worth of stitching. So I should have it done by the end of, I, I'd like to try to have it done by the end of March. So that'd be two stitches a day, pretty much. And, um, I just think that'd be fun. It's my birthday month. So I'll have it as my birthday finish. Um, anyways, if you want to join in, that's hashtag stitch wheel. All right. And I'll leave all the information about it down there. The pattern's free. The information's free. She has been putting up all of these videos for free. It's very nice of her. And I, I just, I'm looking forward to doing it. All right. So that, that is, I think that's all of my stitching projects that I have going. And I did get one paper crafting, uh, thing done. I got Roxy's weekly challenge done of the book page side tuck um, pocket things. I turned mine into tags. I did a video. I'll leave that up in the eye for you if you would like to see it. But all of these are little pocket side tucks that you can, you can put uh, stuff in. And so I will probably put them in a journal or I may just give them away. At the end of the year, after I've collected all this, I, I'm i thinking about having a project giveaway at the end of the year. Like, you know, this would be a giveaway. Somebody would get these six tags. And because as much as I enjoy looking at them on my wall and that kind of stuff, I'd like to start out next year filling the wall back up with new things. And so this would, if I haven't found a use for them, this would pass them forward to somebody who might be able to use them for something else. So that is kind of my plan for these miscellaneous projects that I am doing. Um, so that is my completed paper project. The other finished stitching project I had was my 52 tags and handmade tag and I don't have it here. It's hanging on my wall. Um, I'll put a photo here of where it's hanging and I, I have a video on that also um, that I'll, I'll put in the eye. And so yeah, my that's that's what I got done for my paper projects because I'm still doing people are like, oh, you're not doing paper anymore. Oh, no, I'm still doing paper. In fact, I got two two let's make her happens. Okay, so now what's coming up this next week. No, let's do that last. Let's do that last. All right. So we'll do the haul first. Let's do this first and then the haul and then we'll do upcoming projects because I don't know. It matters. Um, I need to move my camera back. I keep moving down so you can't see. I, yeah. Um, I've been working in my stitching journal and I got my photos printed to go on my pages and their journal on to tell what what they are about you guys saw this last week I had this one in here I got the photo put in here and again more more journaling about what what it was um this is the journal that that embroidery cover is going to go on this was my first embroidery project that was the pattern and this is um the journaling about that. This is again, what I just finished this last week. 
And I didn't put flosses with this one or this one. I, I just didn't. This one are on the other page because they're all the same flosses and this one I'm not gonna worry about. Um, and then this is what I just completed on my journal cover. So you can kind of lightly see, I just faded back what I've already done. And then this is what the pattern, I designed it in on my computer, mouse potato designs, just saying. I designed it on my computer and then I printed it out in the size that I wanted. And then I drew it onto the material um, with the friction markers, which I love. Um, and then I did put the, the floss colors that, you can't see this, here we go. I did put the floss colors uh, that I used in that top part and then I wrote about it. So that's, that's what I've got so far in that. And yeah, so that's kind of cool. And so this is where I've just been keeping miscellaneous. I gotta go through and organize it a bit. I need to make another insert so I can put these kinds. This is what that frame came with, the legs that came with it. Um, so I need to make another insert for that, but uh, yeah, that's, that's that. Um, I know they're using these pre-printed calendars and stuff for their stitching stuff, but I don't keep track of stitches or any of that. I just want to keep track of my projects, so I'm going to do this for a while. I, I'm such, I'm not a good follower in that sense, I guess. All right, what did I say? Haul, haul video, haul part. Um, I had Dale pick me up some, Walmart didn't have very much, and we don't shop right now other than on Amazon, and he was at Walmart, so I had him look to see if they had any dye. I want to dye some fabric different colors so I can play with it. Um, and so I had him pick me up the only two colors I thought were neutral. The rest of them were like neons and stuff. So I got a dark brown and a pearl gray, and I thought those would be fun to play with. Um, speaking of fabric, I have, I bought a while back these walnut crisp, ink crystals. And so I thought I would try to, to make some more neutral colors because I'm not really fond of white. And, but everything kind of comes in white if you're buying cheap. Yes, I'm cheap. And so I wanted to try to dye with the walnut crystals. And um, what I have, most of what I tried to dye was I have um, just some flower sack towels that I got at Sam's Club. You get a whole bunch of them really inexpensive. It's not, they're not super great, but they're, they're quality, but they're great for embroidery. Um, I don't think they'd be very good for cross stitch. They're just too loose and not even weaved at all. Um, I had also bought off of Amazon um, Kato. I don't know. It's 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 natural white. I don't know. It's some kind of linen because um, I didn't know what I was supposed to get and I was excited, so I bought bought something. <laughs> Anyways, it looks like this, and um, again, it's it's not really, it would be okay probably for cross-stitch as it would hold up, but it mostly I, I, I don't, I probably will use it for embroidery because it's just kind of, it's not, I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Anyways, as you can see, they are bright, bright white, and I, I just, I don't, it, I don't like the white. So what I did was I made different saturations of the walnut ink crystal dye and I dyed it. So for the linen that I got off of Amazon that started this color, I did three different pieces of that and it didn't change everything a whole lot. But so, whoops, I have them like this. Okay, so I have white. This is with um, eight quarts of water, one tablespoon, eight quarts of water, two tablespoons, eight quarts of water, same more, eight quarts, three tablespoons of the walnut crystals. Um, so that's, that's, and so it gave, gives me a little bit of a variety. It makes it a nice neutral color instead of the stark white. And I'm really kind of tickled with how they turned out. Um, you know, it's, it, if you're trying to knock back that white, this would be great. It's very mild. Um, 
it just makes it kind of look a little more vintage and I really, really like how that turned out. So that was the linen. And then for the, um, ah, lost my train, the flower sack towels, same, same basic thing on those. We have, um, let's see, I only did, hold on, I got a, one of these has a pattern on it. Really? Anybody know them? Quit calling me, whoever you are, your junk mail. Um, I don't talk on the phone at all, except for my husband and my son. So I always laugh when people call because I won't answer if I don't know the number. Anyways, I don't remember, one of these is patterned, so it didn't work real well. Anyway, so this this white, this I started with, this is the one, one tablespoon to eight quarts of water. This is the three tablespoons to eight quarts of water, so you can kind of see it, it took a little bit better. This one, is the three tablespoons, but it's kind of hard to tell because it, it didn't really work. You can kind of see it's modeled there. I just tied knots in it and um, then I stuck it in there and did it. And so that, that was, I mean, there's like all different splotches and you can really see the knot there. Um, so that was kind of fun and I, I learned a lot, but it, it's, it's a very mild dye unless you use a lot. So I, that's why I decided I was going to try the writ dye. Um, and then I did this one, which is also, I did this one with zip ties. I, uh, just took some up, put a zip tie around it. And then this is in the one tablespoon to eight quarts of water. And you could kind of see that there, it, it did, but I really like this one. It turned out really nice. I don't know what I'm doing with all this, but it's fun, right? But so that's what it started out with. And then you can see the thing. And then I had bought a, a, a drop cloth at Harbor Freight to just use as some miscellaneous material. And it didn't pick up the walnut pretty much at all. Hold on, let me grab the bigger piece. I have stuff everywhere, you guys. But this is, this is the original color. It's a big one, five bucks. They had them on sale, five bucks, and it's like four by 15 feet. <laughs> I'll have material for the rest of my life. No, I plan to make some bags out of it and um, using it for miscellaneous projects. But I tried to dye it and it, it just didn't, it didn't take at all. A little, this one's a little bit different, but not really. Uh, but it's such nice material to work on. So that was fun. So I guess that was kind of a haul too because I got I got that last week. But that's what I plan to do with the dye. Um, I picked up another one of these, the natural, this is what I'm doing the kitchen cross stitch on. Um, I, I just, I picked up another one of those to have in my stash. I may have gotten another pair of scissors or two. I got this pair. Oh my gosh, they're so pretty, you guys. They're so pretty, come on. They're so pretty. Look at these. I love this rusted look. Ah, they're just so pretty. And they're super sharp. They don't have a sharp tip though. So um, they would be good for cutting off, but not for like ed, um, ripping, seam ripping and stuff but who cares, they're pretty, right? Oh, I've got more use out of all these scissors than I thought I ever would. Um, people are like, what are you gonna do with them? I have one of these little scissors with each one of my projects. And so I don't have to go searching for a pair of scissors. I, I just have them hooked with each project. It's been awesome. I love them, love them. Um, the other scissors I got are not as pretty, but I wanted a pair of pinking, pinking shears. And so I, I got a pair of those. And all of this stuff that I got on Amazon is in my Amazon store. Uh, again, affiliate link, you know the drill. If you don't wanna buy through it, don't, I don't care. 
Um, it doesn't cost you anything if you use my links. I'm working for two cups of coffee, people, though. I'm working for two cups of coffee. So all of this stuff that I have said I got on Amazon, obviously I paid for it myself. As far as I know, you can't get free shit from Amazon, but, you know, I'm, I'm an idiot. I wouldn't know. Um, I wouldn't anyways. So that will not happen. Um, but all of this stuff I purchased with my own money. Ask my husband. He can prove it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he just doesn't even ask anymore. <laughs> but anyway, so I got a, a pair of pinking shears. I don't know if they're the best ones. They were not real expensive, but I figured for the amount that I probably will use them, they'll be enough. The, the other deal, oh, I got such a good deal. I told you a couple of videos ago that I was looking for a little small iron. I'd seen Anne use a small iron. Laura, one of the ladies in my Fobonichi group, she has a small iron. And I've been trying to figure out which one to get. But I keep seeing this little tiny itty bitty steam iron pop up on all of these little fabric videos. And so I it, checked it out on Amazon. And this is the one that I got. It's called the Steam Fast Perfectly Smooth Fabric Model SF717. It's a quick and powerful steam, which I didn't find it to be a B. Uh, but it's dual voltage. I did find it to be incredibly hot, which is awesome because if you have ever tried to get wrinkles out of cotton, you know how you need it hot. The steam, I think it just needs to, I needed to use it longer and it would have been all right. Um, but I don't really use steam that often, so I really don't care. But um, it's just a little travel iron, and so that's the box that came in. And then I keep everything in tubs in my house if I can, because otherwise I lose all the bits and pieces. But this is what it looks like. I would say one of the things I don't like is it doesn't have a detachable cord, so you end up having to wind it to, to use it, which is this, is, this is kind of annoying. But it is a nice long cord. Thank you for not putting a two foot cord on it. I hate when they do that. Um, but it's it's nice and heavy. It's really easy to hold on to because it's got a nice big handle. Basically you spin this to be wherever you want it to be on or off. Fill the water in here. It gives you your, your steam lines. Um, the, the ready button, not button. Light. Is right there this is the little steam part it like i said i, I, I eh, but on the steam but on the iron part it's great and it's got such a tiny little tip you can like do those little tiny itty bitty spots you need to get into here's the best part amazon had it for 30 dollars so i'm wandering this amazon at three o'clock in the morning and got it for 15 I think right now it's $19.99. I don't know how long that'll last. But again, this is in my store. Or search it on Amazon. I don't care what you do. Um, but I got it for $15. Bucks. I was like, oh yeah. Oh yeah. And see, 3 a.m. wandering works. Um, but I would have paid $20 for it. Because it's a cute little iron. And it works really, really good. Most of all, it gets hot. Do you remember the little craft irons that look like this that we used to get? They don't get hot. And so it was constant battle with them. This thing gets hot. It comes with um, a little book, a little cuppy thing to fill your water in, and a really nice long cord. So I really am happy with that. And I don't have to use my big iron for little tiny things anymore. So yay. All right. So that was my haul. See, not too bad. I, I have more coming because, yeah. A friend uh, was saying how expensive this was getting and I had a whole bunch of money saved up because I had another, we, we were gonna do something and COVID left turned it. And so we talked about it and I said, I would like to do it, spend it on this. And the family was like, all right. And so I've been investing in, in a new hobby. So projects that are coming up. 52 Tags Handmade Prompt is out. It is bits and pieces. Hold on, I got a clear spot. I don't have a lot of bits and pieces, uh, bits, pieces, and gifts. I don't have a lot of bits and pieces. I am, as you obviously know, brand new into getting into fabrics and that kind of stuff. So I don't have a lot of just like little scraps and stuff. Um, but I don't have any like full bolts of anything either. So I figured what I've got is still technically bits and pieces, even if it's not like a scrap. Um, but I do have gifts, so I'm going to kind of lean more towards the gift 
and not worry about the bits and pieces because isn't it all just kind of bits and pieces? I mean, really in the long run. She also used paper. So the gifts were, I got these from Stephanie. I got this from Linda. I got this from another friend a long, long time ago. This was a gift from my grandmother. Um, I also got these in a happy mail gift. And so I consider that to be gift checked off. And then they are bits and pieces in so like these this I, you know this is just a these are all just bits and pieces of something so I figure that counts. She used paper on hers. For me, I think I'm going to try to use some of these word stickers that Tim Holtz put out that I are awful to use. <laughs> they're they're awful to use. I just I don't know. I don't get it. They must be for collaging and stuff because they're incredibly hard to use the 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 most of the sayings make no sense <laughs> but anyway so i'm going to try to use them in this project too i have some twine i thought would work good in this and kind of my plan is i don't know what it's called i know it's a textile art but basically what these people i've seen do is they lay it out the scraps and the bits and pieces and the yarns and the 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 twines and the that kind of stuff and then they sew over the top of it in patterns so it just kind of sews it down and then they go back and add bits and pieces in it and so i thought i would try to incorporate some beads and sequins into it but so that's kind of what my thinking is for what i want to do with this and mind you i still have to try to get it onto this tag Regrets, regrets, regrets. <laughs> I wish I had picked a bigger tag, but that's okay. I'm gonna stick with it for a year, man. Um, it's been it's been a nice part of the challenge to to take this mass of stuff and condense it down. So um, this is this is my plan so far for the 52 tags handmade challenge. Prompt week eight: bits, pieces, and gifts. So that's what that is going to be. The other thing I want to do is I've decided to tackle my faded missives journal kind of like I'm doing my sewing. Instead of trying to just sit down and do it, I'm going to just do a little bit at a time and then come back to it and do a little bit at a time and come back to it. I have a whole video on the supplies and stuff that I've been using in here. I did find this box that I thought would make a perfect journal type cover for it. So I'm going to figure out something with that. Um, and then, so I'm going to just start working a little bit at a time on this and seeing where it goes. And I am most likely going to give this project away. So, um, because I, I don't have any place to put it on my shelves and I don't have a use for it. So I'm going to finish it and give it away. I thought about just putting it in a box as is and giving it away, but I still want to do it. So we'll see how that goes. All right. Other paper projects in the works. I uh, went through my inspiration journals and I know these are big and hot this year, but I, they are not new. I made that that goes around a lot every couple of years. These are probably 2009, 2010. Um, the, the, when I created them, I didn't invent this. It was just a thing back then. So it's not a new thing. Everybody's like, we're gonna make all these new journals. There's no newness to anything, people. But anyways, I was digging through these, trying to find some inspiration. And so I have found some of these pop-up ideas and i think i'm going to try to do a tag or something like that that um incorporates one of these inspirations that i got i got one over here too a couple over here um and these are just you know um things that i came up with things that i saw on youtube um usually if i saw somebody make it like it was their original design. I put their information. Most of them are not people's original. So I don't worry too much about that anymore because frankly, if you've ripped it off from somebody who ripped it off, who ripped it off, who somebody else ripped it off at some point, you don't deserve credit for it. But, um, a lot of these are stamping up ideas. Um, and I usually link to, I, I got most of these from a Don, Don something stamping up thing. 
I think she's still doing stamping up, but a lot of the trifle or the folded stuff are from cards. And so, but like the double slider, Lord knows who created that thing. Um, and the waterfall card, you know, but so I was flipping through there. So I think I'm going to try to, to do a tag of some kind using those. And so that's, um, I have videos on these journals also. That's my idea for a paper project also to work on this week a little bit. Um, you know what? I think that is the end. The only other thing that I will wrap this up with with sharing is that people were asking about my thread tags. They look like... I need to finish one. Here we go. Actually, I'll use this one. I have them all over. Um, I, I have really loved these, but they're super simple to make, but I, you can make them any shape you want. This is just the shape that I did. And basically what it is, is thread drops are just a little card of some kind that you can buy them, whatever, um, that holds your threads that are cut and ready to go in your sewing project. And um, you can pull either a whole six strand out or you can pull just one strand at a time. It's really unique. Obviously, I did not invent this. My gosh, this has probably been around since the Stone Age. So I am nowhere near claiming this as my idea. I have never seen somebody make them like this before. Um, maybe they have, maybe they haven't. This is just my work in progress for how it's working for me. Um, I took two sheets of craft cardstock and glued them together. Wow. Bozeman this time. I don't know anybody in Bozeman. They sell good mushrooms in Bozeman. They have a whole, um, I don't know how to mute it from here. It'll shut off in a minute. I haven't figured out how to work that yet. Um, it's very fancy, but I'm not. Uh, they have a mushroom farm in Bozeman that I would love to visit. That was a squirrel. Anyways, um, what I did was I went and I figured out approximately what size I wanted and I found a die in my stash. I don't know what brand these are. I know they're not knockoffs from like AliExpress. Um, I've had these for since they started making thin dies. So they're really, really old. Um, but I have no idea. I might have got them when I was working at a scrapbooking store. They're that old, and that's been 10 years ago. Um, anyways, this is the, the outside one, and then I just took a small circle to put in the middle, and I have them washi taped together to make them the same. Um, and then to make the holes, um, I am using the We Are Memory Keepers. It doesn't it's the the big hole one see that one um you can use it for like three ring binder size hole i don't know why don't they put that information on here it probably is and i just can't read it um anyways i use that and i punched here well then i was trying to keep my threads separate the ones i was using versus the ones that were new and so I punched a hole on one side and then I punched a hole on the other. And so now I just, it works so good because um, you can just separate out where you want different thicknesses and that kind of stuff. And then I just hook them on a ring. Um, and yeah, they, that, but that's how I make them in case you're wondering. It's two sheets of craft card stock. You can use anything you want. Um, I use two sheets glued together with the Aileen's spray glue. And um, um, then I pressed them so they would be really, really glued together. I don't, you, there's other glues you can use. Um, and then I die cut them out and punch the holes and put my threads on them. And that's how I make my thread drops. Um, you could, like I said, you could use any, any shape, any material that you can cut through anything. You, you could just use a circle. It doesn't matter. Um, but that's somebody, I had several questions on it and that's how I, how I make them. They, yeah. So, um, okay. That is, that's it. You guys, Whew. <laughs> that was quick. No, it wasn't. It was an hour. All right. I, and I'm not even going to do my Fobonichi flip in this one because I have videos on that and, and I don't, I, I don't think anybody cares. So, um, and that, that's not true. People care. Just, I don't think I need to do a flip of three pages. So, 
um, you can see those on my channel if you're interested in those. Um, that's what I got going for next week. I have, yeah, that's what I've got going. And I'm super excited. I cannot believe how busy I am and yet still not. And I, my house is clean. Yes, it is. Ask my husband. He's very proud of me. Um, I am having so much fun doing these recap videos. It, it makes me feel good about myself because I get to see the things that I've accomplished. Um, it gets my juices flowing, if you will, on being inspired to work on the things that I talk about today over the next week because then I have something to show you guys next week. Um, I, it's been fun to see people jumping in. Um, on different projects and that kind of stuff. I don't think anybody's been doing a recap video that I know of. I could be wrong. I'll have to check the comments on the last one, but I don't remember anybody saying, I'm doing them. So if you are, let me know. If not, that's okay. I'm a rebel. Um, but yeah, that's what I've been working on. That's what I got over the last week. And that's my plans for the upcoming week. I hope you guys are staying warm. I hope Texas is thawing out. And now you're going to flood, right? Hang in there. Get a boat. Um, that's how ours is. We have big, big snow and then 50s the next day and everything floods. So, you, yeah, you, you, floating devices in the middle of December are a requirement. Or it's not December, February. Wow, where am I? But anyways, I hope everybody's doing much better in Texas and in all of these southern states that are getting hit by weird weather. Um, I live in Montana. We go from hundreds in the summers to 20 below zero as a high in the winters. We cross the gamut and I know how they all feel. <laughs> Yeah, it, the, th the saying is, wait five minutes, it'll change. And it, it literally does. Um, but I wouldn't live anywhere else. I have lived in many, many other states. And I always come home to Montana. It, it will be my home until I die. Um, unless my son moves away. And then, I don't know. It may not. We'll have to see as he grows up. What are you guys working on this past week? What have you been working on? What are your future plans for projects for the upcoming week? What what new things have you gotten into? You know, have you tried a new craft? Have you tried a new 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 something? You know, um, thank you for being here. I really appreciate your support. I love all the comments. I am doodly trying to catch up with everybody's comments. Um, across the social media platforms. There are a lot and I'm sucking at it, but I read every single one. I try to answer questions as I come across them, but you are so, so appreciated. Never doubt, never doubt it. I, I don't do this because of you, but because of you, I can do this. And I just appreciate you all being here. Um, I will see you in the next weekly recap for this, but there will be videos in between here and there of the various things I'm working on and completed or whatever, because that's how I roll. I have to share everything. I am an open book. If you want to know it, I will show it. <laughs> I'm a poet today. Look at me. Um, questions, comments, all that kind of stuff. Leave them down below. Um, yeah, I will see you in the next video. Have a great one, you guys. Bye. Ooh. Throwing thread, throwing thread. Bye.